Hi. So, uh, we today we have a uh, John this Don John this Simone this the Simone because it's a kind of quite a uh, tricky last name the Simone, right? The Simone. Yeah. The Simone. Ah, oh, the Simone. I, that I was pronouncing it wrong my entire life. Uh, <laughs> I'm and my best friend was Italian. Said I said I was speaking to my mum. She said there's no Italian name as De Simone, and uh, I said and they said. Show me how it's spelled. D E S I M O N. Oh, De Simone. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. So, Dr. De Simone, uh, who is a senior lecturer in uh, music, and his specialty is uh, composition. He's a he's a seasoned composer, a professional composer. So, uh, he will probably tell us a little bit more about his uh, compositional career in a bit later in this uh, in this video. But for now, uh, uh, let's start um, by asking. The, the your role uh, in this the MS music program. Uh, this academy year you are, you do not teach any specific course, but you'll be working quite closely with the composers who want to do their final project. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, well, yes. Uh, my role will be first is a composition coordinator for, for, for the course. So in the in the first session, I'll be holding general meetings with you all to, to give you a sense of what what. What being a composer means, and what being a composer master study would mean for you, and, and what would, what expectations would be around that. And then, as we go into the next session, I, and you choose your project, I will be acting as a supervisor. So you'll be seeing me regularly throughout the completion of, of your course, where I'll be uh, looking at your work, uh, offering you advice, giving you places to look, scores to read, to help you, uh, and I challenge your ideas importantly. Uh, in a positive way <laughs> to yeah. help you create the piece of music you want to create. Uh, I know that you've been uh, in your in your music in your musical career as a teacher. Uh, you have worked uh, uh, for a long time uh, supervising students, aspiring students who want to be who want to become a composer. So, uh, based on your experience, perhaps your own experience, but also experienced uh, as a, as a, as a teacher, a uh, what kind of a qualities do you think that would, would a student would need to be uh, to, to develop so that they can succeed in our program um it's it's a, it's a big question this and and uh, a lot of us composers are very still attached to our own teaching when we were students as that's such an important formative part of how we how we become composers i think so i'm very uh, feel very privileged to have this role in, in the master's program first of all um so going forward, the quality of composer for me, my personal quality that I, I seek is this notion of authenticity, which it, it can sound a bit vague. But what, what I really want to see is that I, I'm not so concerned whether what you're writing is brand new for the sake of it. I want to know that it's brand new from within you and that when I'm hearing your music, I'm hearing something from that really could only come from you. And so I guess a lot of discussions in composition about how, how to achieve that sound you hear, how to make that happen in... in in reality, when it's transformed through notation or other means and through performance and other means. So really, it's, it's getting that sense of what is it you want to say and what knowledge do I need to help me to back up what I want to say and so I can say it effectively. And that, again, that sounds quite vague, but it's, 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 it's that simple line of inquiry, what do I want to say, builds a much bigger research around it. So I'm looking for composers that have enjoy writing because enjoyments you know why do it if you don't enjoy it but beyond that are really interested critically uh, critically reflecting upon why they want to write what it is they're aiming to achieve and then are prepared to do the sort of research and work around that each piece and how to make it happen as well as developing more technical skills that, are, that make it more easy for you to achieve your ideas i think it's that building a, a, a toolkit that can make you achieve your ideas and then me at the end of it hearing your piece when I hear something, that's something, that, that's something special there. That composer has achieved their ideas and shown me something I didn't necessarily know. And as I said, it doesn't need to be brand new. We don't need to be working to be, always be experimental. Always going, it just needs to be telling you something I didn't know before in an, or showing me a new context for something. Um, so that's what engages me in music, and that's what I'll be encouraging uh, in my supervision. Yeah, the excellent. The, uh... The, that authentic, authenticity. Um, in uh, speaking of authenticity, uh, uh, from from little I know uh, for uh, for uh, about your music, 
I think your music is is quite authentic. So could you tell oh. us a little bit more about you as a composer? Uh, uh, what has been what has been your interest uh, when you you you've been a composer and what are what are you working on right now? Um, yeah, uh, my interest in composer. It's f first of all, I, I love writing music. Uh, um, the, the thrill. It's it's the great thing about composing for me is that um, I, I love playing with bands too. I, I'm a pretty rubbish bass guitarist and I'm an okay tuba player. <laughs> but that that real time experience of playing is so thrilling. But with composing, you get to have that 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 zone you're in for a gig. You can have it for days and days on end because you're there working, creating sound, um, and and hearing the good stuff and writing the good stuff, the stuff that really appeals to me. I get such a thrill from that. So that sustains me, <laughs> sustains me as a composer. So I guess when talking about what I do, I look for projects that give me that sensation. Mm -hmm. So. I'm not sure there's such a thing as a typical composer part professionally, right? um, uh, but I guess you can sort of say there's concert composers, there's film media composers, digital, sound, sonic arts, field com composers, and, and all sorts of sort of, but uh, I, I kind of was taught in the old days when, when a concert composer was a thing, where you write music for concert halls. And, and that never quite sat right for, with me because for me that relied on other people's labor for me to get stuff to happen or, or waiting for phone calls to tell me we'd like to commission you. And I'd be very lucky that that's, that has happened in my life. Um, but for me, it's much, much more exciting to make my own projects. Um, so then I, I can guarantee that thrill. <laughs> of yeah, working in, terms of, uh, in terms of this, uh, the, the, your own project, I know that you've been, uh, you've been, uh, um, you founded a group uh, who 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 would like to play your music? And mm -hmm. could you tell us a little more about that? And maybe one one pe 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 uh, particular project you you feel uh, quite successful? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that, that, a fundamental part of that. And what I hope you, the students here will be doing at last is, is when I was a student, I made very good friendships with performers. Um, and was getting them to play my stuff. You know, and so then I formed a band first in Holland, and then when I moved to Scotland, I formed this group, which still goes today, called Ensemble Thing, which was made out of composers and performers working together. And that's been going 15 years. So, well, 16 years now. And, and just casual friends getting together, making music, and we've carried on over all these years. And that's been, for me, my favorite success story. Um, uh, beyond, and it's not a very successful ensemble, you, you won't necessarily have heard of it, but we still manage to do projects every year. And what excites me about working with them is that I know them. So when I'm writing a piece, I'm not writing for a violin, I'm writing for Liam, who plays violin. And I, I know what he's about, I know what he likes, and sometimes I can work towards that, or sometimes I can subvert that. But I'm definitely writing for the, for the performer, for the person, rather than the instrument. Um, and that's very exciting for me. And, and the feedback, because I know that they're invested a little bit in me and I'm invested in them. Um, so that building that relationship is very exciting. So yeah, so as a composer, that kind of working relationship really, really excites me because I love, it's like cooking, you know, I love cooking meals for my friends and I love <laughs> writing music for them. Um, and I'm very lucky that my friends have been playing 15 years, 16 years professionally. So they're really great at, doing, at realizing my stuff. So I did a project that I think that I'm quite proud of a few years ago with my band or some thing, and it was called Independence. And it was a piece, and it was tied in with the, uh, with the, the Scottish referendum, uh, Independence. I'm not going to say whether I'm for or against, that's not, and the piece wasn't about that. The piece was about how, how one fits in, because I'm an English-born composer, but my mother's Scottish, my father's Italian. So it was really a piece examining cultural identity through musical tropes, as it were. And with, a, with me talking throughout the piece and just about like a really nice kind of show. And <laughs> within that, I thought, here's a, here's a way forward. And in fact, it was selected to be performed in, in the Fringe Festival as a, as a showcase event for the Made in Scotland. And I thought it, it gave me a new idea about you know, how, how we present new music as well as, as a show. And actually, it's, it's fine for the composer to be up talking and sharing why this next piece is about to happen. It creates a journey. And also for me, you know, maybe it's an ego thing, I liked having the whole show of my stuff. I like to have an extended duration where I get to fully explore an idea and share it with you. And then you can take that 
and go go on to the next thing. Whereas I'm, I'm less less uh, less for me personally, I, I I tend not to enjoy the, the sort of smaller pieces. But I love writing them too. <laughs> I'm not getting myself into a hole here. I do enjoy writing all these pieces, but the ones that stick out for me personally in, in the long term view of my career is pieces like Independence, where I feel like I really had a chance, I had an hour to really explore an idea and, and share it. And the last thing is that lots of people I knew in the audience would come. So it felt like a family event, even though it, it went all over the place in the end, it still felt very connected and very close to my values, I think. And I think that's an important thing also with composing, is that you have a kind of set of values about what you want to do and that you can, you can achieve those with your music. Yeah, I think that the uh, uh, as I uh, you know I start by ask by asking you that the uh, I believe you are quite authentic composer. I think that authenticity, the way I understand is that uh, uh, you as a composer is that it actually comes. I just mentioned that uh, you uh, you have successfully uh, create a platform or certain environment in which you are very com- comfortable experimenting uh, uh, your own uh, in ideas that are. There are really com- coming deep down coming from you, but then there is that resonates with the others, and that mm. seems to be quite interesting one. And that you know, the, the, uh, especially composers who often, o- almost all the time, have to work with others. I think that this creating a, the environment or platform that uh, that is uh, that works for themselves is uh, that's I think the key and. And uh, now I think the master level study in the during the master master level study, if if they are able to um, cultivate and develop and find a way to uh, you know how to create a successful platform for themselves as a composer, that mm-hmm. I think might be a really really successful story. Yeah, and that's exactly what I want to encourage in the course. And you'll have some magnificent colleagues to, to work with and. Uh, I, I really think you know, as a composer, that you create your own job, you create your own your own need. You know, you, you don't need to look at what other composers are doing necessarily. Oh. Especially. <laughs> it's good to look. There at, are too many. <laughs> <laughs> you need to look at what they're writing because you know we'll be asking you, do you know what your context is? But in terms of professionally, it's it's, it's down to you, and that's that's exciting actually because. It's, it's the connections you'll make at university, the interactions you'll have with other students that will really help you to, to get a sense of that and to build that. And I'll be encouraging you uh, as a composer to be, to be building those networks mm. and, to use the word again, authentically networked. So you're not hanging, you know, so that it emerges from your social interactions, from your sharing of pieces. Excellent. So uh, they, I, I think that the, uh, the incoming uh, incoming student who are who are interested in a becoming a com- composer or maybe uh, starting as a composer or who have done some composition but they would like to hone in their skills as well as the sensibility as a composer, I think that they will get a lot a lot from you and other colleagues that uh, excellent colleagues that we have in our department. So thank you thank you uh, for taking your time. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Excellent.